This video is a companion to a blog post I wrote earlier this year. I'm actually overdue on putting this video together. But the post was all about how to work with Lightroom catalogs, or specifically Lightroom Classic catalogs, and how to work with Lightroom Classic catalogs when you're working, for instance, like myself, where I have a desktop computer I use here at home, but then when I'm out on the road or in the field, I'm working with my laptop and a different catalog that I've set up specifically for travel. Since I'm using Lightroom Classic, I can't use the Adobe Cloud to sync files back and forth between both systems. So I need to have a solution to get all of my new images, ratings, any edits I've done while I was on the road from the laptop catalog into my main or primary catalog on the desktop computer. We're gonna be doing that using a small external drive that I'm gonna hook up to the laptop to export a specific collection out of that catalog. And then we'll take this same drive, hook it up to the desktop computer and import it into my primary catalog so that I have all my images in one place. Now, before we get into this, it is very, very important that you understand how the Lightroom Classic catalog system works. The catalog is essentially your entire database of edits, ratings, flags, history information on the edits you've performed, metadata changes you've applied to images, anything and everything essentially you've done in a Lightroom Classic catalog is stored in that catalog database or file. Therefore, it is extremely critical that you know how important it is to keep that file in a catalog file protected and safe, and most importantly, backed up in a proper backup service, such as Backblaze, or something similar to that. Now, I'm not gonna go into all those details here. That's not the intent of this video. The blog post, I do step through what the catalog is, how exactly it works, why it's so critical. I do talk about what I use for backup services, which is Backblaze. I go into details and specifics about that and why it's better than using something like Dropbox or OneDrive or Google Cloud, which aren't truly backup services for reasons I get into in that blog post. And then the other important thing to realize is there's multiple ways that you can go about working with Lightroom Classic catalogs between multiple computers, or if you're moving from an old computer to a new computer, or again, in my case, where I'm working with a laptop when I'm on the go or on the road, but I wanna have everything in one place when I'm back home with my desktop computer, there's multiple ways you can go about in working with those different catalogs. And again, I don't wanna get into the weeds with this particular video. What I'm gonna be showing here is what I'm doing for my use case to work with a travel catalog, merge it with my primary catalog, and what I feel is the safest and most efficient way to do so without putting my files at risk or anything like that. So I've got the blog link down below. I also have a companion file you can download. It provides three different workflow guides for how to work with catalogs when you're traveling and when you're back home. So I've linked to that page as well. It's my free downloads page on my website where you can get that travel catalog workflow PDF along with some other freebies that I've got available. And last but not least, before we get into this, if you find this video helpful, as always, please do give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel if you're not already, turn on the bell notifications so you know when I release new videos going forward. And if you really find it helpful, I would be extremely grateful if you either made a small donation using my PayPal link that's in the description below, or you can use the thanks button here on YouTube to make a small contribution as well. Anything you do simply goes towards helping me ensure that I can continue to produce content like this going forward and pursue photography as my career. Now, enough of me talking, let's get to it. So here I am in Lightroom, uh, specifically on my laptop. You can see this is my travel catalog. And you can see I've got a couple different collections in here. So I've got my primary collection set, Travel 2023. Specifically, what I wanna do here is get these Utah images out of this travel catalog and into my primary catalog on my desktop computer. So first things first, I'm going to hook up my external drive. And then I've got a couple different ways I can do this. As you can see, I've got 1,650 images in this Utah collection. I wanna get all of those out of here onto the desktop. I can use my collections and simply right click on that collection and choose export this collection as a catalog. Conversely, if I go into my library, I could also go into my folders. And just like with the collections, I can right click on it and I export the folder as a catalog. It really doesn't matter which way you do it, exporting from a collection, exporting from a folder, it's all gonna work the same from here. So we'll just choose export this folder as catalog. And now it's asking me to select a file name. So I'm gonna name this exported catalog, travel, Utah 2023, and this was back in March, so I'm just gonna do it 03 to indicate March. I'm already in an exported catalogs folder that I created on that external drive. You can see my external drive here is Travel Backup G, Exported Catalogs. 
So I'm going to be exporting this from the laptop's internal drive onto that external drive. And then I've got a couple options down here below, exporting a catalog with 1,650 photos. So I know it's identified all of the photos in that folder or that collection. And I can choose to export negative files, build slash include smart previews, and include available previews. So you can see I've got export negative files ticked. Now, what that essentially means, it's gonna take all of the original raw files that I've got in this catalog on my internal drive right now. It's gonna include those with the exported catalog files so that when I import it into my desktop computer, everything's gonna come along that it needs, the raw files and all of the catalog data as well. And then I've got that last box ticked as well for including available previews. That one really doesn't matter if you do or you don't. If you don't, all it means is you're gonna to have to build those previews on your desktop catalog once you've got it imported in there. I'm gonna go ahead and include them just for the sake of it's a little bit easier to do it here rather than run into it maybe when I'm trying to work on the photos and then I have to wait for previews to be built. Okay, so again, I've got it on my external drive in the folder I've got named exported catalogs, travel Utah 202303. File options, all you have is supported files, so there's nothing to do there. And again, I'm gonna include my raw files. This is really gonna include copies of the raw files, so it's not touching my original files. I don't have to worry about data loss. I'm not gonna build or include smart previews. That's nothing I really use on this system I've got now. So I'm gonna leave that unchecked. And again, I am gonna include the available previews, which that's what's used in library view and things like that, since Lightroom catalogs don't actually include your image files. It's creating previews of the images with your edits and everything so you can see what you're doing. I'm gonna go ahead and click Save. It's exporting a new catalog. This might take a little while since I've got over 1500, but not too bad. But now in the upper left, this is where it's gonna take the time. You can see it's exporting catalog and then there's a progress bar here that will gradually tick along. So we'll do the magic of editing, come back to this in a moment when it's done and I've got it on an external drive. And then I'll walk you through the steps of how to take it off that external drive and import it into your primary catalog on the desktop. Hey, real quick while we wait for that to export, just a quick, totally shameless plug for my upcoming folio, Look for the Light Volume 2, upcoming as of the time of this recording. I expect to start shipping these new folios shortly after the Thanksgiving holiday here in the United States. This folio includes 10 fine art prints, eight by 10 size. If you pre-order by November 15th, 2023, you'll also be able to choose one of four bonus prints to have included for no additional charge. Given that this is volume two, this is clearly the follow-up to a volume one, which I do still have available as well. And if you purchase both folios together, you'll receive 20% off each. Head to my website, michaelrungphotography.com, linked below to learn more and to order your folios today. Now, enough self-promotion, let's jump back in here to Lightroom. So I'm still on the laptop at this point. And you can see that the exporting catalog progress bar has moved quite considerably, but I do have a pop-up here with some problems, exporting as catalog problems. Lightroom was able to successfully export some of the image assets to the new catalog, but encountered these problems. These are photo previews that could not be found. Now these aren't the actual image files, the raw image files that were copied over. So I'm not too worried about this. This just means that four of my images, when I import them into the desktop catalog, when the time comes, those previews will need to be regenerated there instead of being included on the external hard drive to be imported at that time. So I'm just gonna click OK. And now you can see the progress bar is wrapping up. Now that was a lot of files to be moving over in the catalog export. So what I'm gonna do is go into Windows Explorer, into my travel backup drive, Go into that exported catalogs folder. Now we can see I've got travel Utah 2023.03. So that's the export that I just created. I'm gonna double click on that. Now we can see here's my actual catalog file. Here's the catalog data and the previews data. If I go into the 2023-Utah folder, what I'm looking for here is 1,650 files, which I've got 1,650 items in this folder. So I know that all of my original image files, my raw files, were all copied over successfully. I'm just going to close out of this. And now we're gonna leave the laptop. I'm gonna hook that external drive, this guy right here. I'm gonna hook that up to the desktop and we'll walk through the steps to import this exported catalog into my primary catalog. Okay, so here I am. I'm in my primary catalog on my desktop computer. You can see I've got two external drives connected to this computer that I use for my raw file storage. And now I wanna get this exported catalog from the laptop onto the desktop and blend it in with this primary catalog. So to do so, you can go about it a couple different ways. I can come up to file and I could choose import from another catalog. 
Or if I X out of this, if I hold down the Alter Option key on the library module here, my import button down in the lower left will change from import to import catalog. So I'm going to continue to hold down Alter Option, click import catalog. And now I need to find the catalog that I want to import on the external drive. So I already happen to have that pulled up here. So travel back up, exported catalogs. Now this is a previous one that I've done. So I want to go up a level. There's my Travel Utah 2023. I want to double click into this and then I want to select the .lrcat file. That's my main catalog file. Click choose. And now we have this new window that's popped up so I can see that it's got all folders selected. I only included one folder as part of the exported catalog from the laptop. You can see on my image files, 1,650. Just like a standard import, you can check all, uncheck all, select individual groups of individual files. In this case, I obviously want to include all. Again, you've got another confirmation here, new photos, 1,650. Under file handling, I've got copy new photos to a new location and import, which is what I want. I could also say add the new photos to this catalog without moving, but that would leave the files on the external drive that I use for my travel. So I don't want to do that. I need to get it onto the external drive that I use for my quote unquote final repository or final resting place for my raw images. So we're going to leave this copy new photos to a new location selected. Here we want to choose the location. So I'm going to come up. You can see this is my external drive, Professional Photography 2. I'm going to go into 2023. And this is the main folder that I want to drop it into. So you can see I've got other folders in here already for 2023. So I'm just going to select that folder. If it had detected that there were any files included in this catalog that I'm importing in the existing primary catalog, I would also have some options here in terms of how to handle existing photos if any were found. If you go to that blog post, it walk you through what your different options are here as well. But at this point, all I need to do is click import and it's going to start doing its thing. Now, while that's running, it is going to take a little while with over 1500 images, but even though I only selected that lrcat file or the actual catalog file as part of this import process, it automatically knows that along with that file goes those preview files, the lr data file, I believe it is, and then all of the image files in the corresponding folder as well. So it's doing all that automatically behind the scenes. It knows all those things are linked together. So again, through the magic of editing, we'll come back to this in a little bit and we'll walk through the final steps. All right, after about half an hour, the import is done. You can see I'm viewing previous import right now and I've got 1,650 photos as I should, so I know that everything imported correctly. If I were to come in here and look at a photo and jump over to the develop panel, I can go into the history and see all the history for the edits I've made have carried in as well, just like I want. My ratings, flags, color labels, all of that stuff has come in seamlessly from the travel catalog. And just to reconfirm, I can go to catalog, previous import, 1650, and go to folders, look at professional photography 2 on my L drive, go into 2023, there's my Utah files that I just imported in from that catalog. Again, 1650. And just for due diligence, we can go into my collections, 2023, and uh-oh, we don't see them here. So unfortunately, there's no way to tell it to add the existing collection that I had in the catalog on the laptop into a collection set I have in the desktop catalog. That's why I'm not seeing it here in my 2023 collection set. But if you come down here, you'll see there's a travel dash 2023. If I expand that, lo and behold, there's my 2023 Utah collection. So I can just drag this up to 2023 collection set. And just like that, now it's right there. Now, again, there's more to this than what I've covered here in terms of other options and things like that. One of the big things I really stress in the blog and the workflow PDF that you can download for free is doing validation kind of along the way. So before you do your export as catalog from your travel laptop, making sure you've got a good backup of that catalog just in case something goes wrong. It should be pretty straightforward that it's safe to begin with, but hey, you never know. And then also making sure I've got a good backup of my desktop catalog as well, so that when I'm importing in here, again, if something goes wrong, I'm protected. And you should be doing that anyways. I usually back up 
at least once a week when I close out Lightroom and it prompts me. But sometimes I do so more frequently if I'm doing more edits and things like that. And I want to make sure I don't run any risk of losing that data. And once again, if you found this helpful, please give the video a thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel if you're not already. If you'd like to express your thanks, you can leave a donation via the PayPal link down below or hit the thanks button here on YouTube to make a small contribution. Again, all of that goes towards contributing towards my ability to continue to produce videos like this going forward, as well as supporting my photography in general. And anything you do of that nature is always tremendously appreciated. And with that, until next time, take care.